All right, welcome back. Let's write some code. So of course, behind the scenes, I have cleared out that example increment LiveWire code. Of course, we don't need that. All right, so let's do this. Let's open up the sidebar and come down to our welcome file. And why don't we, to start, uh, create a container for everything. So I'll put that within here. And then maybe we'll have a header section where we have our code breaker uh, text. All right, let's have a look in the browser. Yeah, and that's what we get. Notice though, well, let's select all of this. We have a container and by default, uh, Tailwind will apply some responsive maximum widths. So if I set a background color of red, you can see what's going on here. Okay, so a couple things. Why don't we, hmm, what I will often do is I will have a section wrapper and then within it a container. So the section will extend to the edges of the browser uh, window, but it might have a little bit of padding. So we might do something like this, padding six, and then the container uh, will be centered. Okay, so now if I come back and give it a refresh, you can see what we're working on there. And yeah, if you want even in your body, you could add some uh, basic padding all around the body tag or some initial padding top uh, to bring it away from the screen. Again, whatever, whatever is appropriate. Uh, for now, we'll just add it there though. Cool. All right, so we have our header, we have our H1, but now of course we want the logo that we installed in the last episode. So I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not even sure these days what the rules are for adding uh, a, a, an image in place of uh, your, your text logo. Uh, in the past, we had all of these funky things where you would, you would add the image, but then you would um, indent the text so that it went off the screen, but it wasn't invisible, all of this weird stuff. I'm not sure if people still do that anymore, but it was considered a good practice at the time. For now, I'm just gonna do this, I think. That's okay. Do we also need to, uh, let me know in the comments, do we also need to do an area label? I think that might be okay, but I'm not sure. Anyways, if I come back and refresh, that looks good. But of course now I can't see the text. You can see it right there uh, because we have white text on a white background. So let's do this. Let's go back to Zeppelin. And I believe Adrian has some coloring here. Yeah, this is what I want. So why don't we grab, hmm, it's a radial gradient, but why don't we just grab this darker color as you see here. So I will grab that and let's do this. I'm gonna open up my Tailwind configuration file in the root of the project. And why don't we add a custom color? Um, honestly, most of the time I stick with things like this, but if we wanna be nice and proper, we could call it primary and I will paste that in. Okay, so I still have the Tailwind Surfer running behind the scenes and Vite. So we, we will instantly have uh, new primary utility classes available to us. So that means if I come back to our welcome view, actually, you know what? We should probably put it within the layout file. I can now instantly say background primary, and that should work. Cool, looks good to me. So yeah, again, if we have a look at our layouts, just to see the borders here, um, I do want, uh, how do I want to do this? Do we want to set a display of flex on the header? Uh, we could set margin to auto on the image itself. Why don't we just start with this? Let's set a display of flex and justify everything to the center. And that should make it look like it's right in the middle of the page. Okay, so we have our code breaker logo right below it. I'm imagining some kind of um, nicely presented text area. You type your code and that will instantly reveal the code below and you can then print it. Again, a very basic uh, project, but these things are fun to work on. All right, so let's see. That's gonna go into our custom component. And yeah, I guess we have a form. And then within here, we will have our text area. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, not very pretty, but that's okay. Uh, again, I'm gonna do our little flex justify center trick, but I'm imagining we will probably change that at some point. Yeah, maybe a little march and top to bring it away from the header. All right, and then you type in here. And yeah, it, it sounds like we need to track what you are typing within there and then display it below. Okay, next though, maybe, Let's set a background color. You know, of course we don't want that, that harsh white background color. So instead, should we set it to, um, I don't know, BG white 
Yeah, so I'm setting it to, of course, white. Uh, but if we add slash, I can then use a percentage. And that, of course, is setting the opacity for the background color. So I will often reach for things like that all of the time, as you see here. Right down here, yeah, notice white background color. But the, uh, the alpha is set to 10%. Cool. Next, the text should be white. Cool. Maybe a little padding all around it. I don't know. Padding three. Mm, maybe uh, on the Y, top and bottom, we want two. But on the left and right, the X axis, we have three. All right. Next, why don't we make it rounded? And uh, yeah, I think that looks fine. All right. So we type in here. And yeah, again, this is for kids. So you'll type things like the cow jumped over the moon, and that then gets converted into various symbols. Okay, so why don't we do this? Um, we need to track what you type into the text area. So we could do something like wire model, and this could be, and what do we want to call this? Is it the message that you're trying to code break? Yeah, I think that's a good name. All right, let's go into the corresponding uh, component, and we will track a string called message. Cool. So yeah, check this out. What we could do is right below it, uh, we could echo out the corresponding message as you type into it. But as it is right now, I don't think this will work. So if I start typing, I don't see anything. And that's because, well, I would need to do wire.model.live if I want instant results. Now, if I type into it, Notice, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not displaying it properly because of Flexbox that I said we'd have to change at some point. But yeah, sure enough, you can see as I type in here, uh, it's making a request back to the server, that property is being updated, and then the template is being re-rendered uh, while passing in the updated data, of course. So the cow, and I'm just showing you how we can do these things, jumped over the moon, and then all we would have to do is translate each of these letters into a corresponding uh, symbol. So yeah, what I'm imagining is maybe we can find a custom font where every single letter is mapped to some kind of um, some kind of symbol, like you know, like like a sun or a star. But here's something we should be careful of: we can't always map, for example, the letter T to a star because then, of course, the kids are going to get smart and they will remember after they do their fourth or fifth code break, that T is always a star. So there will, we, we can't just do a one-to-one -one mapping between the letter and the, the font, right? So there will need to be some kind of shuffling to make it random. And yeah, you know what? I think we're going to take a look at that in the next episode. I'll see you then.